Hello friends, the Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson 20 in my Bourbon School. Today I'm going to tackle the topic of proof versus ABV, which are in fact both ways to measure alcohol. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, why they're two standards and where the name proof comes from. And to help me through this episode, I am sipping on a Blanson's Gold. So actually quite easy to get hold of internationally, but in the US, very difficult to get hold of. Very nice whiskey indeed. So cheers you all. And again, thank you so much for watching. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice. All right. The topic of today, as you can see on the... Um, on the label here, there are actually two ways to measure alcohol. One says proof and the other one says ABV. So it is a little bit weird that there are two different um, ways to measure this. So what I'll be covering today is firstly, the difference between proof and ABV. I think you may know what it is already. And if you don't, you will learn in, in a few seconds. Um, I also gonna go into a little bit of the rules. I mean, do you really have to put both on the label or just one of them? I'll, I'll Give you a couple of details there and then of course i'll also dig into a little bit about uh, the word proof because abv stands for alcohol by volume it's sort of the name indicates what that is but the word proof why that is associated with alcohol content i'm going to tell you about as well and then also i'll kind of dig in a little bit why there are actually not just one standard but two standards okay so the difference between proof and abv it's actually pretty easy so proof um, that's a scale that goes from zero to 200. So that means 100 in the middle means that about half of all the uh, liquid in the bottle is alcohol and the rest is, well, water and, and, and other things, right? And ABV, since it's a percentage scale, goes from zero to 100. Uh, it may be a little bit easier to understand, you know, zero to 100 percentage. So, and that basically means that if you compare proof to ABV since it's from 0 to 200 and 0 to 100 just means that two proof points is one ABV. So super easy to understand. So you have something that is 100 proof, it is 50 ABV. If you have something that is 120 proof, it is 60 ABV. Super easy to understand. All right. Um, but you know, sometimes math is hard, you know, and I came across this label uh, actually about, about a month ago, very famous uh, manufacturer, Willet uh, Distillery, I think out of Bartstown in, in Kentucky. And I don't have to go into the details, but you can probably see that someone here did make a mistake because what is the 60.9 times two doesn't really make 137.6. So even the best of the people can actually make mistakes sometimes. But, but you know, unless there is a mistake, you will see the two numbers. It basically affected two of the other. Okay. So do you need both on the label? So this is actually where it gets a little bit interesting because um, stating ABV is mandatory in the US. It is illegal only to indicate proof. You have to put ABV on the bottle. Um, you can also put proof on, of course, but that is sort of optional. Uh, I would say that most manufacturers, I, I've seen a few that only write ABV, but I would say 90 plus of all manufacturers, they actually put both of these uh, numbers on the label. And then the last two bullets here, maybe some uh, rules you didn't know. Um, so if you put both on the label, uh, they need to be very close to each other. Actually, the law says next to each other. And I can give you many examples where that is not happening. And also um, the optional indication, which is the proof indication, needs to stand out as the optional. So you can see it's sort of like the same as the other one in either brackets or parentheses or with, with a slash or something like this. And I would say 90% of the manufacturers, they do not adhere to this rule. So I'm going to show you one example, a very good example of someone that is uh, following all rules. So Jim Beam, white label, the most sold bourbon in the entire world. If you zoom in a little bit on the bottom uh, area of the label, you will actually see here, it very clearly says 40% ABV. And then in parentheses, it says 80 proof. So that particular way to show it follows all the rules to the letter. 
I'm also gonna show you a bad example, and ironically, it's from the same manufacturer, right? So uh, Knob Creek, in case you didn't know, it's also made by Jim Beam. As you can see, the bottom part of the, um, this is the normal nine-year-old bourbon. Uh, um, actually, it's sort of like a special uh, single barrel, which has a little bit higher APV, I should say. And you see here, it does say, 120 proof, but it says that before 60 ABV. Um, and also it says 120 proof with really, really, really big letters. They're probably claiming it's sort of part of the uh, out, uh, layout or the, uh, um, you know, sort of design on the label. Um, that's probably that take. And you can see there's no parenthesis or anything else. So uh, this particular label, if you want to be a real stickler, does not conform to the rules and should not be allowed. But obviously, uh, there are so many manufacturers that do it this way. I think the TTP, which is the authorities, they basically gave up uh, on this one, right? And also because, of course, Proof is probably more known to the American or the uh, North American uh, population uh, than ABV. So that is probably why the manufacturers are doing it this way. Okay. So as promised, so why is it called proof? So put on the sentence here. So if the liquid burns, it must be proof of the existence of alcohol. And that is actually what they did in the old days. Um, all the very specialized equipment that you use today to measure alcohol, very, very detailed, uh, hydrometer and, 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 and equipment like that, they obviously didn't have that hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So what they did, uh, probably in the 17th century, it's a little shady exactly when it started, they had, a, they had this rule, so uh, they poured out some spirits, whiskey or otherwise, in a glass, they put it on fire, and if there was sort of like a steady flame, like on the picture here, uh, that would be proof of the existence of a normal alcohol level. If it had a little bit of difficulties to ignite, if it couldn't ignite, you know, people basically starting to uh, trying to cheat them, uh, and that was a way for them to 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 um, to test it. And also, I mean, if the flame was very high and you know burning really fast, uh, it was also proof that the alcohol percentage or sorry alcohol content was higher than was what expected. So they did decide back then that sort of normal alcohol level and God knows who defined that at one point was like a hundred and that was when the flame was steady and you can imagine how inaccurate that measurement was. Also flames, uh, you know, there's all things, you know, uh, humidity and temperature and all that. So it's very, very um, difficult to do this accurately. But they said 100 is sort of like good and 200 is maximum and zero is nothing. So that's why they started the, um, uh, the proof scale. Um, a little bit later on, and I'm not making this up, they actually found out a, a slightly more accurate way to uh, to measure this. They they did pour the whiskey over gunpowder, and in case you wonder what on earth is going on, uh, gunpowder actually, unless it's sort of in an enclosed space, it will not explode. It will it will ignite, and it will sort of have a big flame or whatever. But they actually did pour whiskey over the gunpowder, and, and because that sort of made it more predictable, uh, flame wise. But it, it was still the same scale. Hundred is good. Two hundred is maximum. It's etc. So. Cool, so that's why it was called proof. So why are there two standards, you may say? So so it is a little bit weird, but I would say one thing. So um, ABV, so alcohol by volume, is the global standard. It's used in every country, almost every country in the entire world. So that's sort of like the global standard. But, but American consumers since hundreds of years ago are more used and familiar with this proof level, right? Uh, that has been used, you know, literally since late late 1600s and, and early 1700s for sure. Uh, and it's just been part of, you know, how you just you just measure alcohol. And, and as you probably know, you know, introducing sort of international, especially measurement uh, standards in the US has been very, very, very difficult. I mean, the US is one of, I think, four or five countries in the entire world uh, that doesn't use uh, the metric system, even though the metric system is part of the US law, it's just optional for the states to implement it. Um, so that has always been, been uh, proved very, very um, difficult. And ironically, um, is that if you look at beverage alcohol, there you have actually in the US embraced the metric system. It's all about liters and milliliters. So the metric system, right? So this is a little bit confusing. So I think all oh, the reason why there are two standards is that 
to just, just make sure to make everybody happy. And it doesn't take that much effort. You basically need to multiply by two and put a little bit extra number on your label for the manufacturers. So not a big deal, uh, unless you're really bad at math, of course. Um, and, and it's simply just to, to serve all people. So I think that is probably the reason why to this day, there are still two indications on the label. But remember, ABV is mandatory and proof is optional. So you will find whiskey, bourbon, rye products out there that only have the ABV indication. So yeah, that was it. Short lesson again today. And this is um, uh, lesson number 20. So I think we're around the halfway mark there. So I will thank you once again so much for, for listening. And uh, if you find this interesting, tell a friend, you know, share it on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I, it will make me very, very happy. So thanks again for listening. Cheers.